on a couple of different levels. Jesus talks about how faith in him serves, you know, a purpose beyond just in the moment. You know, you, you think about it, sometimes, you know, we can find ourselves, I can't count the number of times people will say they struggle with distraction in prayer or sticking with a discipline or a regiment or, you know, sometimes finding themselves, you know, getting out of the practice of, you know, sometimes even going to Mass, just things get in the way and so forth. What Jesus is telling us, though, I believe, at least one part of it is that sometimes in those individual moments, we can find it very easy to excuse ourselves from, okay, I'm not going to pray today. I'm not going to go to Mass this week. I've got other things that are preoccupying my time. On a couple of levels, he's reminding us that those things go beyond just the edification in the moment. Now, how many times do we say, okay, I, I beat myself up and got myself there. You know, maybe I wasn't, you know, the timing wasn't great or I was distracted and I said, I'm going to take my time to pray anyway and come away and found out and said, boy, was that great and great investment. I really needed that time. But sometimes you kind of just get lax and we can fall out of the, the practice of, um, of things. And I believe what Jesus is telling us is it's not just for the edification of that moment. In some sense, it's storing up ourselves a reserve for when we really need it. Um, I've visited many people in the hospital or people who were sick from time to time and it's really kind of interesting, you know, the different types of receptions that you, you get. Um, I've visited people who were in the hospital for very minor things, or at least we could look at them as very minor, and you would have thought that the world had come to an end because they were missing this thing or that thing or couldn't do something, which, which I get. I'm probably, I probably lean in that direction myself, not, you know, you want to get out of the hospital as fast as you can. That's just kind of normal. Um, a normal re reaction. But on the other side, I've also visited people who were engaged in rather lengthy hospital stays. Um, we're looking at rather dire um, circumstances. You know, maybe we're going to look at losing a limb or maybe their lifespan was not going to be that great. And yet, had such a serenity about it all. And I, the only thing I could see in terms of the two extremes is some had really had their faith that they'd been practicing and utilizing and praying through, and this was just another thing that they were praying through. They were the people Jesus talked about of building their home on rock and not on sand. They were ready for the floods, the winds, whatever the world brought at them because they had done this already. They had themselves rooted and grounded. And I believe that's really what he's telling us there today is that all that we do today isn't just for today. It's also for those times that things can be tough. And then ultimately, he also tells us it's also having that relationship with God is so important just in terms of the end there. You know, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, enters the kingdom of heaven. That's pretty sobering, right? In other words, it's not just because I say I want there. It's, you know, Jesus is saying we need to have that relationship and so forth. And, you know, God is always merciful, but we also be, need to be people who respond to that mercy. So I think the thing for us today is just to kind of look at our own lives and say, where is it that I need to up my game in terms of building that relationship with God, building my house not on sand, but on solid rock, keeping a faith that is regular and vibrant. And I don't know that there's one way that I could say, here's the way of doing that. What I would say is it does involve some degree of discipline and an attitude. You know, Paul talks about praying without ceasing. And I don't think that meant locking yourself in church 24-7 in formal prayer, but having that prayerful spirit, having our eyes open to God's working and activity in our lives, welcoming the victories as well as the struggles as opportunities for us to grow in grace in holiness, and even in empathy towards others. So today, let's look at where our spiritual lives are during this great season of Advent, a time of watching, of waiting, of hope-filled expectation, recognizing that all that we do today is not just for today, but also what God has in store for us to come.
Amen.